Well, good day to everybody. I am Louise Eddington, the Cosmic Owl of Cosmic Owl Astrology. Here's my owl. <laughs> and um, whoa, um, I'm finally getting over the COVID. So I'm feeling a little bit livelier than the last podcast. So thank you for sticking with me. And before I get started, I'd love to ask you to subscribe to my channel hit the little bell to get notified when I upload new content because next week I am really excited to say that I am interviewing the amazing Melanie Reinhardt and we're going to be talking about Chariclo. Now Melanie has been working with Chariclo since her discovery in 1997. She's kind of the the grandmother or goddess of, <laughs> of the centaurs. So you don't want to miss that. So you want to notify that little um, subscribe and mark that little bell so you get a little notification in your YouTube when you um, when I upload that video. And I hope you'll subscribe anyway and, um, and support my channel because the algorithms love things like that. And please give me a thumbs up. And to whoever it is that keeps giving me a thumbs down now and again, just scroll on by. There's no need for it, really. <laughs> anyway, um, also, please ignore this. One of my cats, um, the famous Bob, if you know Bob the cat, our adopted street cat, who is a senior. He caught me with his um, claw last night. But hey, it's fine. Doesn't even hurt just looks like a big wound. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So Cosmic Owl Astrology. I am Louise Eddington. I'm an astrologer and I'm author of three books. Uh, Modern Astrology was my first book. Complete Guide to Astrology is my second book, and that's a bestseller on Amazon. And my third and newest book is The Complete Guide to Tarot and Astrology, about using um, astrology to understand the tarot and how you can mix them within um, with each other. So speaking of the tarot, <laughs> before we look at the chart and before we speak about the Leo new moon and the things that are leading up to it, which is what I'm going to be talking about today, I pulled a card for the chart itself. And I'm actually going to show you two cards today because I want to teach you a little bit of tarot while we're doing this okay but the card I pulled for this new moon this new moon I must say has a really good feeling I'm recording this just a couple of hours after the Capricorn full moon which is a little bit overpowering and a lot of people have had a hard time leading up to it um, after today's Capricorn uh, full moon, we're kind of waning towards the next start of the next lunar cycle, which will be at uh, five degrees Leo. And this is the card I pulled for it, the universe or the world in other decks. And I want to um, read you the quote from Angelis Arian, the Angelis Arian book, the tarot handbook that um, I use with this deck. The uh, T H O T H tarot, T toss or thoth. And she says, The universe resounds with the joyful cry, I am. And that's by Scriabin. And this card represents the principle, principle of totality, individu individuation, and wholeness. And now just look at the joyfulness in this, in this um, card, right? We have all four elements represented in the corners of the card. So we're bringing all the elements of the zodiac together. Uh, the figure itself is, is really kind of um, a dancing figure holding a sickle, returning it back to the original vision or life force symbolized by the Egyptian eye of Horus, which it's keep pointing at, okay. The Eastern equivalent to this figure is Shiva dancing in a ring of fire on the head of a dwarfed figure. Christianity holds this symbol as the Virgin Mary who places her foot firmly on the serpent's head and body. Regardless of cross-cultural interpretations, this figure is essentially hermaphrodite and a symbol of balance in the expression of being equally 
uh, dynamic and magnetic simultaneously. This figure represents the completion and integration of great inner work, which has involved unifying polarities, oppositions, and paradoxes within oneself. The universe represents the triumph of negation and the experience of nirvana or union with multiple parts of the self. It symbolizes the unity of positive and negative forces, both internally and externally. And I, was, I cannot tell you how overjoyed I was to pull this card because I have, a, when I look at the astrology chart for this new moon coming up, I, I feel full of joy and full of courage. But I also wanted to share with you this card. This is the Leo card in the Tothel Thoth Tarot. It's the lust card. In other decks, it's called the strength card. And this means literally lust for life. Okay. And um, this card, lust in its higher sense, is the bliss of experiencing integration with something higher than yourself. So both, if we look at both these cards, okay, this is kind of the naked figures, lost in abandon. We've got the um, Eye of Horus in both. We've got all the elements in the heads. And, um, and this is a real kind of, um, these cards together, to my mind, mean really kind of overcoming and creating something out of the ashes particularly created on this Capricorn um, full moon that we've had today, which has very much have been associated with a uh, kind of death of many things in, in many ways. So, you know, I, I think there's much, much positivity in this card. And, and um, lust implies we can experience life with situations which are not necessarily conventional, but if we have natural talents, we should develop them develop them but on the other hand we should not just indulge our wanton desires that would be the uh, seven of cups card okay but this is kind of embracing life you know um to to just hold up this card again Crowley was the creator of this deck and commissioned the art and he um portrays this card as bringing in the new aeon which is, and the Aeon is another card, but it's this symbol at the top. It's bringing this new paradigm in um, with this just joyful um, 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 lust <laughs> and courage for life. Okay, so it, it's, it's a really, well, two very, very positive cards in this one. Um, in the Tree of Life, the Lust card, connects um, mercy to power and these are the highest ideals on the tree of life below the abyss so there is a high vibration to this card and it's not on the lower part of the tree it's definitely on a on the higher part of the tree okay um the universe is is um it is kind of the the final card in the major arcana so we pulled the um number um, 11 card and the number 21 card so there's a great great strength of new beginnings a gateway let's create a wonderful life um but be abandoned in it and um abandoned a lot of kind of societal expectations and contra and constructs and coming from the heart so this is going to be reflected in the astrology so um let's bear in mind both those cards beautiful cards okay all right so let's have a look at the new moon chart itself okay so the leo new moon takes place july the 28th at 6.55 p.m. Universal Time, London, or British Standard Time. So um, actually that's one behind Universal Time, I think. But anyway, it's London time, 6.55 p.m. there, um, 11.55 a.m. where I am in Mountain Time. So um, 
10.55 a.m. Pacific, uh, 2, 1.55 p.m. <laughs> in um, Eastern and um, anywhere else you'll have to work it out yourself. Um, so it's the 28th, which is, um, we've got the two, which is the divine feminine and the eight, which is the number of infinity or strength and balance but it creates a one so it's very much new beginnings we're in a seven month and seven is um one is the most intuitive and connected with source of numbers and of course as we've seen before we've, we're in a six year with three twos three numbers of the divine feminine creating a six which is another feminine very creative year i've said all along that this is a very creative year it may not feel like it um, a lot of the time with what's going on in the world, but I kind of feel like a lot of the bad stuff that's happening around is being revealed so that we can create something better. And I thought that for a long time. Okay, so looking at the chart itself, um, the new moon is at five degrees, um, 38 minutes of uh, Leo. It's conjunct series. And it's actually um, the focal point of a finger of fate or, or finger of God, Yod. Now, this finger of fate or finger of God is very tight by um, degrees, uh, but it's using some lesser known objects. So first, we more commonly over here, we have Vesta. Vesta in Pisces. Vesta actually stationed um, retrograde recently. And she's in Pisces and Vesta is focus, commitment and de devotion. And, for, and in Pisces, this is really to our intuition, to source, to spirit, to whatever that is, to connecting with the collective unconscious. And then Vesta is in sextile to Pholus. And Pholus is one of the centaurs. So, you know, watch my uh, interview with Melanie when next week. But um, Pholus, um, in his kind of expression, his keywords, if you like, are um, taking the lid off it. And Pholus in Capricorn, along with Pluto, has been taking the lid off a lot of corruption and um, in the structures of our um, institutions and our lives. He's been taking the lid off kind of uh, the, the rules that are not working. He's been um, letting Pandora's box come out, if you like. So, you know, we can see that in all the history of, of, of what's been going on over the past few years. Um, and these two are in aspect to each other, a sextile. So, and Vesta is also very much to do with the hearth and home, especially our kind of inner home and our personal hearts, but also the hearth of nations. So Pholus has been ripping that lid off. Vesta's here saying, all right, um, you know, what's been revealed, we have to focus and commit to tuning into that inner world. And those two are working together on this new moon to point at the sun and moon in Leo. And it's a really tight yod. So the moon and the sun is a real focal point on this. So everything I say about the new moon in Leo is kind of like a real focus of what we need to be working on and what we need to be creating. Now, if, um, I'm recording this on July the 13th. So um, before this uh, new moon, between the full moon and the new one, um, Juno um, stationed retrograde on um, July the 25th, Chiron stationed retrograde on July the 19th, and Eris um, stationed retrograde on July the 21st. So we now have one, two, and I'm counting them as planets, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine retrogrades sorry, 10, because Pholus is retrograde too. And all these retrogrades are all on one side of the nodes. And this is the side of the nodes. They're confined, moving towards the north node, 
on the side where we've had three draconic bowls in the last two and a half years, um, basically during the pandemic. We are really kind of revisiting something, whilst on the other side of the nodes, we've got all this new creation coming. So that's the kind of pattern of the chart. Other things I want to say about this, that before I kind of just talk about everything, is that um, the new moon is conjunct series. Now on this new moon, the moon is still slightly out of bounds on the Capricorn um, full moon and the Cancer new moon, uh, the last two lunations. The moon was very out of bounds. Now it's just still a little bit out of bounds. So still kind of quite wild emotions, but um, now the moon is about to go back in bounds but it's still kind of doing its own thing. Our emotions are kind of not tethered very much to the ecliptic. So um, we've got that. Ceres is also out of bounds and Ceres is conjunct this new moon. And Ceres, so the moon is generally the mother. Ceres is the great mother. Um, she's um, the, the great mother goddess that brought the cereal grain to earth. She is the destroyer goddess who um, stopped the seasons because um, she was not being listened to. She's also the one that came to a place of forgiveness and compromise in order to keep um, cycles of life rolling, the seasons. And Ceres is out of bounds. She's actually been out of bounds since March the 19th. And she will go back in bounds on, July, on August the 9th. So this is the last lunation where she's out of bounds. So that gives, because these three are conjunct and the sun is the ruler of Leo. Um, so the sun is in um, their domicile. These three, the moon, the sun and Ceres are very powerful and they're the focal point of this. So when we talk about Leo, um, I'll talk a lot more about that. Also on the day of this new moon on July the 28th, Jupiter stations retrograde right after the new moon. It doesn't show as retrograde, it's not red on this, but it's actually at the minute to its retrograde um, station and will by the end of this day have stationed retrograde. So Jupiter is in a very powerful position too. And so I'll talk more about that. The other thing I'll be talking a lot about um, this Mercury in Leo, Mercury in Leo, uh, between the uh, full moon that we're on now and the new moon on July the 28th, will have left um, the combust of the sun, will have had superior conjunction, um, where the sun and moon are conjunct with Mercury behind the sun. And Mercury is now the messenger, is now leading all the planets. Um, bef um, on the full moon in Capricorn, Ceres was leading all the planets and now the sun has overtaken Ceres and Mercury has overtaken Ceres. And so we've had a bit of a change of order here and Mercury the messenger is out there um, saying, saying here I am kind of thing and I am bringing you messages from the heart in the air. But Mercury is also in an almost exact square to the nodes and an even more exact square to Uranus. Mars, Uranus and um, the North Node are about to meet at 18 degrees. They, the two, Mars, Uranus and the North Node, they'll all be at 80 degrees of Taurus on August the 1st, so right after this new moon. So this is really happening on this new moon. And Mercury is forming a T-square to it. So this is radical. This is radical awakening, radical change, radical action. And I'll talk more about that um, as well um, as I move it. One other thing I want to mention before this new moon is that um, on the lead in to the new moon, as the moon moves through Taurus and round to Leo, so he's going on his closing quarter square before this new moon um, or just after the closing quarter square when we're in the last week of the lunation. 
we have two lunar occultations. And seeing as this is a new moon, I think they're worth mentioning. The, the, on the 21st, um, July the 21st, uh, we'll have a lunar occultation of Mars, which means that from our perspective, um, the moon will block out Mars, okay? And so that's happening on 22nd of June. Um, and then, sorry, on the um, 21st of July, sorry, not 22nd of June. Ah. And then um, the day after on the 8th, so that lunar occultation of Mars is actually going to be visible from parts of Eastern Asia and the United States. So that one will affect many of us in this country. Then we'll, um, the day after, we'll get an occultation of Uranus. Now, this is one of many. We have one, two, three, four, five. This will be the fifth of many occultations of Uranus. I keep meaning to do a video about these. Um, but this um, occultation of Uranus on the 22nd will be visible from parts of Brazil. And there are actually some political upheavals happening in all those areas, Eastern Asia, um, you, the USA, and um, we saw the one in Sri Lanka, right? The palace being um, invaded and Brazil's having some political upheavals too. And these occultations are kind of really um, going to focalize those areas. Occultations are like eclipses and the occultations are happening just days before these two meet the North Node. So we're, we're in some very, very um, big and major changing times. So I'm gonna stop the share and um, I'm gonna talk to you first of all about the five, then I'll talk about all the other things because this is at five degrees. And at five is said to be the prevailing number in um, nature and art. Uh, five symbolizes fire and the stigmata, the five uh, points, okay? It's multi-talented with many interests. Five is a, a number of change, independent, free thinking, fast moving, um, and um, quite sometimes can be quite reckless as well and self-indulgent if you think of the shadow of this Leo card. That even though that's not a five card, we're building up a picture of all the energies, okay? So five is really about personal freedom, um, unconventional individualism, non-attachment, change, life lessons learned through experience. I'm a five personally. So it relates to the five senses, um, five fingers, five toes. Um, it relates to um, Venus because of the five pointed star that Venus makes. But also um, the five does relate to the, num the um, planet Mars and we see Mars active in this chart and also um, Jupiter and Jupiter's stationing retrograde. Mars and Jupiter, both very fiery planets. Um, Jupiter ruling Sagittarius um, and Mars ruling Aries, fire, um, fire, fire, fire. <laughs> so this is an adventurous, courageous, passionate, responsive um, new moon. Okay, it's got such great potential. Now, the only uh, kind of um, cautions about this are this rashness, this inconsistency, um, and it can also be, uh, there can also be a caution about um, uh, fear of change and think, bearing in mind that Leo is a fixed sign, kind of a bit rigid in thought and, and, and going, no, I don't want this new beginning. So if we look at the actual um, sign of Leo that the new moon is in, Leo um, is ruled by the heart. The French root word for heart is cur, uh, which relates to courage. And it brings me back to this lust, courage, strength card. But Leo is affectionate, childlike, magnanimous, generous, very strong-willed, very... Um, 
but also very opinionated, can be quite overbearing, uh, but it's a sign of leadership. If you think of Leo, Leo is the sign of the ruler, <laughs> the king or the queen, it's the throne. Um, Leo is, can be like a big red balloon, um, um, ego-wise, kind of going, look at me, look at me, very dramatic, very melodramatic, but also with this tender heart that where the red balloon can be just like pricked uh, by being hurt because it can be a little bit egotistical, but really it's Leo is fun loving and just wants to be liked. Leo is joy, Leo is playful, Leo is fun, Leo is proud in the, in the highest sense of the word and in the pride comes before a fall sense of the word. Leo is a warm sign, it's kind of loud, um, <laughs> entertaining, very enthusiastic and, um, and just really quite sincere and a show off, but it just wants to be liked. And it's a really creative sign when it follows the heart, which the heart rules it. So if you're kind of in flow with this Leo new moon, then, you know, we're getting this kind of energy of real creation. Now to look at this, um, uh, to look at this uh, new moon relating to this yod, this finger of fate, this finger of God that I've talked about, um, we're kind of being encouraged, I think, to focus our heart on what we can create um, with the kind of remnants of what's being left, with the lid being taken off all the structures of our lives. Our structures are changing. I'm not just talking about our governments. You know, there's, we have inflation again. Jobs are not once what they once were. Many people cannot find jobs other than zero hour contracts. Going to college, it suddenly often seems less important to some people than it did. Priorities are changing, particularly for our younger people. And Leo being a very kind of childlike, youthful sign is, is relating to a lot of these people. And we are thinking about what kind of life can we create um, that's uh, creating a new kind of focus, a new kind of heart for our future generations um, in many ways. Now, Ceres being conjunct the new moon is at two degrees, which is the number of the divine feminine. I've said it again and again and again, we are being called towards creating something that's more integrated, more nurturing, more caring, more in alignment with the seasons, more in alignment with cycles of life and death, um, that's more kind of circular, more inclusive, more receptive, more nurturing. So um, series is bringing that element into it, out of the um, mess of what's being taken the lid off, and about what we need to focus on creating in Vesta. So a really creative new moon. Now, one thing I did not mention is that um, the new moon itself at 5.38 Leo is opposing Chariclo. Interviewing Melanie Reinhardt next week, don't miss it. Um, released on the 21st or 22nd. I might not get it uploaded to the 22nd. Chariclo is at six degrees of Aquarius, holding space for healing. Now I have to tell you, I, I try to include all of you in these new and full moon reports, but Chariclo is making the second pass to the USA's South Node. She is um, opposing the new moon. So she's at the midpoint of Folus and Vesta, Chariclo is saying, I'm holding space for the United States to heal, to, um, to move into the creative potential and promise of what this new country promised uh, 248 years ago when Pluto, when the country was formed, 
whatever. Yeah, we're having its Pluto return. I might be a little off with the maths there. But um, USA is having its Pluto return and also it's been a star point return um, this year. And so Leah, that means the new moon is on the north node of Leah, uh, of the USA's chart, saying you can recreate this. You're, you're being shown the holes, you're being shown the holes in the constitution, holes in the rules, holes in the system, where the system is all broken. And you can really truly create something and have the courage to create it. So that's kind of enough about the USA, but it's, it's kind of huge for it. So I had to mention it and go, because it's on the USA's North Node. Now, speaking of North Nodes, <laughs> we then have this T-square. Oh, shall I go to the T-square? Let's talk about Jupiter first, because Jupiter um, is stationing retrograde. Jupiter's stationing retrograde at eight um, Aries. Uh, eight, we're on, we've got the eight in the date, and eight is the number of strength and infinity. In Aries, Jupiter is going to go retrograde and is going to go retrograde all the way back into Pisces. Jupiter will station retrograde until November the 23rd, and he'll go back to 28 degrees Pisces, 47 minutes, and station direct at the end of November, and then work his way back into Aries. So Jupiter is really... Um, going to retrace steps and look where we've kind of overexpanded or look about our identities where we want to expand our identities more our I am and our pioneer energy was he's retracing it and going we need to have a big big look at all this about the things that have happened um, over the last few months so that's important as well and at eight he's he's coming back and saying have the courage to have a big, hard look at yourselves, okay, um, for sure. So that's all connected in with all the other things I'm saying. Then we have this T-square. Whoa, 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 whoa. Mercury in Leo um, it can be a little bit bombastic, to be honest, and Mercury is forming this T-square to the nodes. But in uh, Mercury and Uranus are said to be the higher and lower octave of the mind. Mercury is thought, ideas, voice, speaking. Um, in Leo, he can be a little bit like um, overbearing, um, but also lots of creative ideas and thoughts um, if he's coming from the heart. He's almost in this exact square to Uranus, which is the higher mind, innovative ideas, invention, um, radical um, radical change. Um, Uranus is a little bit shocking. He's the aha moment. He's the light bulb. He's the lord of lightning bolts. The, the ideas that tend to just come down from nowhere and go, oh my goodness. And then Mars is right there too. And remember, they're both being occulted as well on the way to this. So they've just literally been reset by the moon. Okay, so Mars in Taurus is determined, determined action. And they are conjunct the North Node, the Taurus North Node, which is about sustainability, values, and, um, and embodiment, and really earthy, trying to connect with what is sustainable, creating sustainable living, creating an economy that's sustainable for all. This, to my mind, is revolutionary on this new moon. Um, at this point, you know, over these two or three days of the new moon, because the new moon is about three days, not just on the moment, really. So July the 28th is the new moon, July the 31st, August the 30th, August the 1st, Mars and Uranus cross that north node, Jupiter turns retrograde. We are being asked to change radically. I think we're going to get some radical ideas, some um, possibly, possibly uh, somebody could step out of the shadows who's going to be a radical new leader 
um, either just in the USA because it's affecting the USA an awful lot, or also, you know, several kind of new leaders um, globally, new potentials. Younger people could be stepping out of the shadows and kind of saying, I'm ready, we need radical change. This old God is not working anymore. That was the Capricorn, the elders, the old guard, nothing against older people, I'm one myself. But really, you know, it's kind of got stale and kind of got stuck. And we're in, a, in this feedback loop of doing nothing because everything is stalled and blocked. And this Leo new moon is inviting us to create something very new. So it'll apply to you personally as well, of course, particularly if you have anything around five degrees of the fixed signs. So if you have anything around five degrees Taurus, five degrees Leo, five degrees Scorpio, not be me, <laughs> five degrees of Aquarius, then you are going to be greatly affected by this. But really five, around five degrees anywhere in the chart. And I'm going to say really from about two to eight degrees um, you know, planets will be affected by this powerful new moon. You're also going to be affected. Um, again, it's the fixed signs mainly, the Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. If you have anything around um, 15 to 22 degrees, I'm going to say maybe 14 to 22 degrees of the fixed signs, you're going to be really affected as well. And um, Saturn is kind of almost about to form a grand fixed grand cross. So this is a very tense point of change. Five being the number of change. It feels a little bit like a tense in, um, stretched uh, rubber band that's just about to go ping. And, um, and it, there could be a bit of whiplash from this because it's a very powerful changing um, new moon. But positive it feels nice it feels good this new moon okay so before i go to um the chandra symbols i am not promoting anything this episode um i i tried out some sponsorships we're going to see how that goes um i, I will never do more than one sponsorship <laughs> in a podcast episode ever again um if you found it a little bit off-putting um, I learned that lesson myself. We, we do learn these things. But, you know, um, if you um, saw the products in the podcast, um, they are great products. So go and check them out. I'm not going to talk about them again. But um, while you're here, please, please subscribe. Um, if you are on iTunes or even if you like to watch on YouTube and you have an iTunes account, please go to iTunes reviews and leave me a review. Um, the more reviews I get, the more visible the um, podcast is. Five star, I hope. Uh, written reviews, even better. Uh, the more I get, the better. But um, subscribers on YouTube, I'm really uh, looking to grow my YouTube channel more and check that little bell and please leave me a thumbs up. Don't leave me a thumbs down. If you don't like it, just don't watch. <laughs> anyway, Leo 6. So I'm going to look at the Sabian Sam symbol first of all. So um, I, I kind of like this um, for this new moon. And this is a conservative old fashioned lady is confronted by a hippie girl. And the keynote from Rajya was the need to transcend our subservience to fashion in morals as well as in clothes. I'm not going to comment, but that topic seems very relevant and up right now um, in terms of morals as what's being seen as moral or what is conservative as moral. So um, that's all I'll say about that. So uh, Rudyard says this refers to the ever changing pageant of social values as ideals of human relationships succeed one another, one generation facing in the next an antithetic picture of what it has been brought up to consider worthwhile and decent. This confrontation may lead to great bitterness, yet it should show us the impermanence of most of what society 
impresses upon our collective mentality. So he says this, this refers to a collective cultural and social crisis, which challenges to realize the relativity of social values. I think those of you that follow me kind of know which direction I'm going in <laughs> because um, I think I see the astrology. I see we're moving into this new paradigm where um, gender fluidity and, and such um, other um, mentality that's been put on us um, is, is kind of going to change a lot. That's my words on that. And, and yet we have this conservative as conservatism of saying, no, this is the way it's been. This is the way it should be. There is only this, there is only that. The conservative old fashion is confronted by this hippie, this free loving going, no, I have to be me. I have to live from my heart. So um, kind of hard luck really conservative. So you're on the way out. I'll maybe get some thumbs down for that, but eh, oh well. Um, Leo six for the Chandra symbol, a hamster running in a treadmill. Keeping up with things can be an all consuming matter because everything changes all the time. There are always fresh angles to master. And when you are coming from a very old place, it is not so easy to shake yourself loose and become the next thing asked. To do it, you may have to turn yourself into a super high powered accomplisher, converting ancient ways to radically different eras. You are personally, privately, one way and publicly, impersonally, another way, turning it on to suit the occasion. The karmic performer in overdrive, hustling to catch up, at times compelled to rely on tricks, frantic to cover all bases, to be everywhere, pushing yourself to learn how to operate within a contemporary world that is alien, at a loss, yet also gifted, bringing with you from the heart of nature such jewels and wonders that the world may ask. Why do you cast your pearls before swine? But there are moments in the journey when doing whatever is called for becomes its own reward, even if the pace is grinding and the recognition sparse, something bright abides and sustains you beautifully. So really, you know, it's kind of saying the same thing, um, you know, within ourselves, uh, not just in society, we're going to come up with that conservative. This is how it's always been. I don't like change, <laughs> uh, kind of uh, let's, let's stick to the status quo kind of energy. And yet the astrology is saying, no, it's time to change. It's time to accept the radical change. It's time to think very differently. We are moving into a new paradigm. We are creating this new age, era, whatever you want to call it. And we have to just move with the times and radically change. And it's not easy, but if you step into the heart and the Leo and, and these cards, you know, I want to take you back to these cards. If we each change within us and are willing to change, even if inside us we're going, oh, this is hard, this is hard, I don't wanna change, abandon ourselves to the change, reach for the future, reach into the new aeon, the new paradigm, then, you know, we are worth moving towards the integration that's being asked of us. Whew. Wow. All right. Wow. This new moon I'm very excited about. Okay. I have found this full moon, the Capricorn full moon and the Cancer new moon. That was, um, um, two weeks ago as I record this has been quite difficult <laughs> I got the COVID on the new moon incidentally the new moon was at seven cancer and I have so much in my chart at seven degrees and it kind of took me down but I got a lot out of it I found it to almost be kind of a spiritual um, shifting event that I'm still processing 
So anyway, um, that's it for the new moon. Look forward to this new moon. Kind of grasp, ride that tiger, gather your courage, feel into your heart, maybe do some heart um, centered um, meditations leading up to the new moon. So you know what's in your heart. It's creative. If you're not doing the Artist Way class with me, do your morning pages. Um, look up Artist Way morning pages if you don't know what they are. This is the time to really um, go with the flow and change and, and just be led by the heart. So if you have any of my books, Complete Guide to Astrology, and the others are over there, Complete Guide to Tarot and Astrology and the Complete Guide to, um, oh no, Modern Astrology was my first. Please leave me reviews on Amazon. And again, please, you know, subscribe, all those things. And look out for Melanie Reinhardt next week. So excited about that. Or you might be watching this afterwards, in which case it'll be on my YouTube channel. And you can go and look at the video before this and watch my Tea with Louise interview with Melanie. So excited. She's one of my favorite astrologers. Much love to you all. And I will see you next time for the Aquarius full moon. <laughs>